Okay, so I just finished watching Yuri on Ice for the first time like three days ago. If you've watched it, can someone please tell me that this is normal? Like, I don't know what to do with myself. I have so many emotions. <laughs> I can't even listen to the music without like tearing up. I've been watching crack compilations for hours on YouTube. I started following fan accounts on Instagram and Tumblr, and this is my lock screen. Somebody send help. I have never felt like this about any piece of fiction ever. I almost wish I hadn't seen it, because now I've, I'm changed, forever changed. I'm a different person. <laughs> There's before victory and after victory and there is no in between. I think I need help. I think I need serious help. Also on that note, if anyone has any anime recommendations, I would love to receive them. We just started watching Kids on the Slope and I'm pretty sure at this point I just can't get enough of beautiful anime boys being extremely talented and falling in love. So any recommendations would be great. Thank you. Hi friends. It's been a hectic couple of weeks. I'm going into production, so I will be on set for three solid days, like 12 hour days. And I'm really excited about it and also just terrified that I'm gonna screw it up. But that means last week was spent just prepping, buying, cleaning, crafting. I made a flower wreath, that was cool. Never done that before. And pretty much everything else is going by the wayside until this project is over. So at this moment in time, I am currently just a little stressed, a little anxious. So I thought I would do a video that would be easy to accomplish, wouldn't require a whole lot of brain power on my end, but it's something that has been requested by a subscriber of mine. So this person said that they really wanted to know kind of how my base routine came to be. The comment also said something akin to, I've never seen someone do their base makeup like you do. And I found that really interesting because so much of my style is definitely inspired by and copped from a multitude of different artists on Instagram, on YouTube, professional MUAs. And over the years of being on YouTube, I've cherry picked methods and styles here and there. And I think because there's so many of them now in the melting pot that maybe it's all kind of come together to create something very me, very individual. And the more I thought about it, the more fascinating it was to break down piece by piece, which part of my routine was inspired by whom. So that leads us to today's video. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to apply my my base. While I'm doing so, I'm going to talk through all of the different techniques I use and where I originally found the inspiration for that technique. So if that sounds interesting to you, then please keep on watching and let's get started. First things first, remove all the jewelry that I brought to the shoot because I hate having to clean it while it's currently on my face. I learned early on pretty quickly that I prefer hydrating primers, gripping primers. While I am a bit oily in the T-zone, I rarely use a mattifying or pore filling primer in these areas because these areas are also quite textured for me. Also, I just realized that my favorite primer of all time, I already packed in my kit, which is the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. I think I caught on to that particular product from Jordi. It's likely makeup on YouTube. She was probably one of the first YouTubers I watched that made me want to start my own channel. I will probably be bringing her up a lot in this video. She's also the one that got me onto the Fenty Hydrovisor, which is an SPF moisturizer. And that's already on my face. I use that before I leave the house. Once I get here, I do sometimes want to add just another layer of prep. So usually that's Milk Hydro Grip, but I don't have it with me today. So we're gonna dip into the bougiest primer I think I own. This is the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. It doesn't have the same tacky gripping properties as the Milk Hydro Grip, but it is super moisturizing and it's got a very luxurious texture and smell and you only need a little bit and it does make my foundation look silky smooth when I apply it. So my base routine is changed a lot over the years I've been on YouTube, especially in regards to coverage. I think foundation styles have also just morphed over the years as well. You know, when I started getting into makeup, it was all about caking it on, all about baking. The base was really matte and poreless. I think dewier, more fresh looking bases have become more popular. And honestly, at this point, I'm trying not to follow trends as much as I'm just trying to figure out what works best for my skin. What I've started doing recently, and this is a technique from Katie Jane Hughes. She's a professional makeup artist. She's on Instagram. 
the most beautiful. Like I want to be her when I grow up. And I saw her do this little quick, natural, fresh and dewy face base routine on her Instagram. And I think I've talked about this before, but she was the one that inspired me to start putting on my concealer before anything else. This is a technique that actually helps prevent creasing because you're using the least amount of product and you're also using the heat of your hands to melt the product into your skin. So we're going in with the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, which is my favorite, has been for like the last year and a bit. Product recommendation, definitely inspired by Jackie Ina. And then I'll take my ring finger or my middle finger and then I'll just start to tap that into the skin. And the heat of my finger will warm up that product really nicely and melt it into the skin. Also, this application technique where I placed the concealer, those two little dots on the inner and outer corners, that is a tip that I copped from Robert Welsh, also a professional MUA. And this technique is not one that is new and it's not one that Robert claims to have invented, but this placement of concealer is something that he has repopularized. But it gives you just enough coverage and also concentrates it in the areas that probably need the most coverage. Also really lifts the eye and the cheekbone. Because I have such baggy, creasy under eyes, I've always struggled with creasing and concealer collecting under my eyes. This is the only application technique that I found really combats that. So while I'm here, let's just go in with the rest of our concealer. The other reason I like to do concealer first is to cut back on the amount of foundation that I use. Concealer usually is a higher coverage product than foundation, especially for me, because I use a very low coverage foundation currently. Applying concealer in the areas where I need it the most ensures that I am pinpointing the areas of my face where I need coverage. A lot of my redness lives right there on the jawline. The other areas where redness lives is right on my nose. The other place where I get really red is right underneath the eye here on the top of my cheek. And it'll shine through even with concealer and foundation. And I like the way the sponge applies the concealer because I can really press it in and also lift the excess product that I don't need. So there we go, we are neutralized. Now I'm using the Milk Makeup Sunshine Skin Tint. I've fallen deeply, deeply in love with this, especially with this foundation technique. All this will do is kind of give the skin that luster, that glow, that, that evenness and tone, but it doesn't have to do all the heavy lifting. And the Sunshine Skin Tint is something that both Pomp Berry and It's Likely Makeup have used and loved in the past. Palm is another one that I will probably reference a lot in this video. I'm just putting it in the places where we didn't put any product down. And then to blend it in, I actually use a flat top foundation brush, mostly because it's fast. It applies really evenly and really quickly. But with this product especially, it just really works well with this brush. This is the Sigma F80 Flat Kabuki in the Jamie French Sigma brush kit. And there were a few artists that got me interested in the foundation brush as opposed to the sponge. One of them being Jordi. When she came up with her brush kit with Furless, it included a really nice flat top foundation brush. Another one is Robbie De Christie. She uses the It Cosmetics Love is the Foundation Brush. I have memorized it by now because she says it like every other video. I don't know if I'll always love a foundation brush. I do go back and forth between this and the sponge every now and then. And I think it also depends on which foundation you're using. I discovered that the Shiseido Synchro Skin Foundation works the best, I think, when you apply it just like a moisturizer with your hands. And so this is the moment where I go in in with my cream bronzer. And I started using cream bronzer, I think solely because of Scott Barnes and that video where he painted Tati Westbrook. I feel like when I was watching that video, my eyes were being opened. It was kind of revelatory. He actually does things a little bit differently. He underpaints. He goes in with his cream bronzers and his concealers, all the things that brighten and darken first. And then on top of that, he goes in with a foundation. And so for a long time, I was just doing exactly that. I was underpainting, but I was just finding that I was having less control over my bronzer application. Plus putting foundation over top of the bronzer kind of muddied it a bit. I packed away my favorite brush to apply this in my kit. I think it's a Real Techniques brush and it's like this densely packed foundation brush, but it's rounded on top and it just applies cream bronzer so freaking beautifully, but I don't have it today. So we're just gonna use my flat top and I pat some out on the back of my hand, but I try to focus the bronzer at the very back, nice and high. And I try not to bring it in too far into the center of the face. That was a tip that I copped from Miss Fame. She says you should stop applying your bronzer or your contour kind of at the natural point where the brush would leave the face. If you were dragging it in this direction into the contour, wherever that brush sort of naturally leaves off, and that's kind of where you should stop bringing it in. And I like to 
paint right underneath here along the jaw and carving it up. And I believe that this method of application for the jawline is also a Scott Barnes technique. And then I just kind of take what's left and shade in the corners of my forehead. Don't want to bring it too far down because I don't know, my forehead's not that big. And now I'm just going to buff that in circles. I'm gonna take my sponge and clean up underneath this line here because I don't want it to go too far down. And I do like to contour and cream for the nose. My nose contour always looks too severe when I only go in with powder. Trying to follow the natural line of the nose. I don't really pinch my nose in too hard with contour. And then just taking my sponge and blending those out. All right, that is the liquid and cream portion all complete. Now let's start working with some powders. Even with that very sparing application of concealer, I still get under eye creases. So we gotta have at least a little bit of powder protection under there. So what I'm doing is I'm knocking out any creases or buildup that I've happened while I was applying my bronzer. And then quickly, I'm just going to tap into my loose powder with this tulip brush and press it right in to the under eye. I used to do this with a sponge. I used to bake my under eyes. I feel like this technique is a little bit more consistent when it comes to textured skin. If I apply powder with a sponge under my eyes on a bad skin day, the powder will just grab onto places and emphasize them. This is the Sigma Spotlight Duster. It's another Jamie French recommendation. She loves these things. And the powder I'm using is the Fenty Pro Filter in the shade Butter. It's got a bit of a yellow tone to it, which I think helps combat some of my redness. And I'm powdering down the most in the places where I will end up getting shiny and oily and where my foundation tends to break down the fastest. So that is especially on the nose. Even before I finish filming, my forehead will usually already be full shine right in the center of my face and the chin, and definitely the crease of the chin and my smile lines. Everywhere else is gonna get a really nice light dusting just to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere and it won't transfer onto my clothes or my mask or other people's clothes when I eventually get to hug them again. And the next tip I have is actually from Thomas Halbert. And this is a little tip for brightening. Got me onto the Maybelline Superstay Full Coverage Powder Foundation. I use it kind of as a spot brightener. So I take a brush and wherever I feel like I need to just brighten a little bit and bring forward and I'll tap that pretty firmly into those areas, especially just right, not quite underneath the eye, but kind of underneath the eye bag. I don't know if you can really see the difference. It's quite subtle. It does just take care of that little extra bit of redness that's peeking through. I like to take this just on the point of my chin, down the bridge of the nose, the sides of the nose, and that kind of cleans up the nose contour a little bit as well. And then I'll take this right along the jawline underneath the bronzer. And then next step is to reinforce all of the cream bronzer with some powder bronzer. Right now I'm using the Marc Jacobs Tantastic. It's light, it's taupey, it's not super warm or super cool. I just find it's a really nice everyday color for me. And for bronzer application, I like to use a big fluffy brush. Currently I'm using the Sandra brush from Hank and Henry. It's the perfect shape for bronzer, especially all over the face because it's nice and big and fluffy, but it's not too wide. So it doesn't overtake my face. And I'm starting again really high up onto the cheekbone here and swirling it, holding the brush at the very back so that I'm not applying too much pressure because I always like my bronzers to be very soft and diffused. And again, I'm not bringing it too far into the center of the face, keeping it closer to the perimeter and lifted. And then I just quickly dust that under the jaw. I don't want to look like I have too much of a chin strap. Just a tiny bit of that onto the forehead. Sometimes I'll go in with a glowier bronzer like the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer just to add like a little bit of glow. Next up, we're gonna do some eyebrows. Now the eyebrows have definitely come a long way since I started doing makeup. I shaved off the tails a couple years ago for a Halloween video actually. I think it was my first Halloween video ever on the channel. Still one of my most popular uploads to this day. And I like the look of these brows so much that I just kind of never went back. I like the versatility of having a half shaved brow. It also gives me more room to 
play with eyeshadow. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the brow hair that I do have and coating it with some brow gel, a tinted brow gel. This is the Benefit Gimme Brow. I honestly haven't changed my brow products in like over two years. Benefit makes some of the best brow products and I haven't found a brand yet that rivals them. So until I do, that's what I'm gonna keep using. My brows are definitely an amalgam of basically like every single alternative e-girl on the internet. But I also try to keep in mind the contours of my own face and what goes well with my bone structure. So I'll sketch it out here. I'll start by following this natural line up and I will stop and curve right around where I can feel my bone structure curve. And then I will just give it a tiny little flick. I don't like to elongate them too much anymore. If I'm not too careful, I will and it'll just look crazy. So now I try to keep them a little bit shorter and then I'm gonna connect the bottom here, feel out where the curve of my brow bone is. All right, now that we got our little commas, I like to sketch them in. I don't wanna fill them in all the way because it looks less like hair. So I like to keep the lines kind of sketchy, kind of following the natural hair pattern of my real brow. And then I like to try and blend those two areas together. Now the tail of the brow though is where I can be a little bit more concentrated. I think another person I've taken brow inspo from is Spooky Lil Peach on Instagram. Her face is perfection. So like unattainable goals, but her brows are always really nice and high and beautifully arched, keeping the front of the brow fluffy as well. And listen, I know my brows never look the same. My brows are deeply asymmetrical. And that is because the structure of my face is very asymmetrical as well. I do my best to correct that, but sometimes there's just not a whole lot you can do. And then I like to fluff the front with the spoolie. And then for the final touch, I take a little eyebrow marker and kind of sketch little hair strokes coming off of the tail and also up into the front of the brow. It's a lot of steps, but we got there. Let's move on to freckles. This is something that I have always loved other artists for. Jordy is a huge freckle lover. Robbie D. Christie loves freckles. Betty Jean, Butte Bean here on YouTube. What I love about freckles is that you can use them to cover up blemishes, but also freckles when you concentrate them in certain areas kind of act as a little bit of a natural contour, which is why I don't really feel the need to further contour my nose with powder. I'm just going to cover that all up with freckles anyway. So what I'm using first here is the ColourPop freckle pen. The pen has a little bit more precision, but it doesn't blend out like a freckle stain will. So I wouldn't use this on its own, but it is perfect for pinpointing those blemishes. After that, I like to layer some more freckles on with either freck or salty face. Both of these work kind of in the same way. They're a freckle stain. So you can actually, once you dot it on, take your finger and then kind of pick up the excess product and then dot it around the area. And so that way they look quite natural because you really get to blend them into the skin and shear them out. I think it was on Pinterest though that I saw fake freckles for the first time. I believe the first image I saw of someone with a face full of fake freckles that I just fell in love with and instantly wanted to adopt it was probably an image from Lauren Rower, whom I reference very often on this channel because she is visually goals. And then I like to soften the freckles with some more bronzer, especially across the nose and just concentrate that bronzer kind of along the sides, just in the area where we place those freckles down. This is a Raw Beauty Christie trick. She does this to look nice and sun-kissed. I think she uses a more glowy bronzer and I am not really the biggest fan of using glowy bronzers in places where I'm trying to contour or push back features. And this is the stage where I would normally turn on my camera and start talking to you guys. This is kind of where you guys come in in the process. So from here, we can kind of do whatever we want. So why don't we throw on just like a quick eye look, nothing fancy. Well, my eyeshadow base is also packed in my kit. So I have to improvise a little bit of concealer. This is not something I would normally do. And because it's concealer, it will crease. So I think I need to actually throw down a little bit of powder, which is very unlike me. So I was debating on using something that I already have, just yank it out. But while we're here, we might as well play with something new, you know, kind of tease it out a bit because, you know, might want to do a two looks one palette. So this might be fun to try out a little bit beforehand. If you're a longtime subscriber, you know that this is a big deal. <laughs> I finally got my hands on the Vintage Rose palette and I really want to do a two looks one palette with this as well. But I thought, you know what? Let's just pull it out today, do a really Really quick, easy, rosy, bronzy eye. But just because we can, let's bust out Divine Rose 2 as well because it's got some nice lighter crease shades. Let's pick up a fave shade of mine, Naked Blush. 
basically I just want to do a quick and easy eyeshadow look that will be complementary to some blush draping because I feel like if I didn't demo or talk about my blush draping techniques people would be upset so let's use some eyeshadows that will really lend itself well to this so I'm just gonna start taking it from the crease and just underneath the outer corner of the eye start to pat it and tap it out in this direction Let's keep it nice and lifted. I feel like blush draping looks always look the prettiest when they're nice and high on the backs of the cheekbone and on the temple. I will take this under the eye as well. Basically going to take the eyeshadow under the eye here, but I wanna try and keep the blush focused out here and less pulled in onto the actual apple of the cheek. And honestly, I don't know if I could tell you strictly where I got this blush draping technique from. Blush draping is everywhere. It's definitely not unique to me. I think I've just sort of created my favorite way of doing it. Someone who keeps their blush really high on the temples is actually Betty Jean, Butte Bean. Very rarely does she ever bring a blush down onto the apple of the cheek. It is always right high and tight, right back here. Why don't we tap into Rust Rose? Oof, this color looks amazing. It is so funny. I thought for so long that I would never be able to get my hands on this palette because it is always, always out of stock. I'm not gonna pull this darker color too far down, but we're definitely trying to marry these two colors together so that the blush draping really is just a continuation of the eye and just melting together. But that's basically all blush draping is. Let's throw something on the lid, something fun. Let's try Copper Rose on the lid, cause why not? Let's bust out some glitter primer to be safe. What? That's nuts. Let's finish off the lid with a little bit of Astral Pink Moon, just to keep it a little bit lighter and brighter on the inner third. We were born to make history, make it happen, turn it around. Yes, we were born to make history. This song's been stuck in my head for three days straight. Somebody help me. Taking this onto a brush and press that in the rest of the way. And that's about all the work I feel like doing today on my eyes. So why don't I go do this on the other side, throw on some lashes, and then when we come back, we will finish the rest of the look. Okay, other side is done, lashes are on. These are Lash Goals by Bold Face. My current fave, I think. And we're just gonna finish up the face nice and simple. Since most of my blush is done, this should be pretty easy. I'm going to finish up doing the rest of my blush, basically just to blush up a little bit across the bridge of the nose and under the chin. I think the person who stands out in my mind the most as someone who does chin blush really well is Miss Ratto. And the way that she just did her chin blush is honestly the cutest thing ever. And then just patting that across the bridge of the nose. And I used to take it really high onto the bridge, but I think it actually is a bit cuter if you leave it kind of closer to the button of the nose and concentrate it in a smaller area. And this is absolutely a Jordy trick. This is a Pontberry trick. And this is also, I think, a Nikki Tutorials trick. Everybody does a little bit of nose blush. And again, not doing too much. I used to carry it all the way across the nose. And I think concentrating it a little bit more makes it look a little less prominent, a little more purposeful. But yeah, chin blush is just one of those things that always stuck with me. And I've never stopped doing it. It's just one of those things that I automatically do when I'm doing blush. And now my chin just feels kind of naked without it. It. It's like creating that triangle, right? So, you know, emphasizing out here and then also drawing focus to that point. And if you've been with me for a while, you know that I love a good glowy blush to layer. And I like to layer that onto the apple of the cheek. This is Milani Luminoso. It's a classic. I think Jack Emery was the person who got me onto Luminoso. This just creates a nice base, a nice setup for highlight so that all of the cheek products can all blend together. And I think I'm gonna use Star Surfer again for highlight. I know I used it in the last video. I will link that up here. It was a three 
Deluxe One palette, which was absolutely bonkers. Highlight placement, this has changed a lot over the years too. I used to bring highlight way up onto the very top of the cheekbone. It's sort of a classic placement for highlight. But over the years, I've kind of developed placement that I believe is more flattering to my own face shape. Figuring out your base routine is just all about discovering your own bone structure. And I believe who started doing this kind of highlight placement was Jaclyn Hill, or at least she's the one that kind of got Rob Beauty Christie onto it, who then in turn got me onto it. And I think it's super flattering placing highlight kind of further into the center of the face, just under the eye here, and really emphasizing that little ball of the cheek. Because I don't have very prominent cheekbones up here, light doesn't really hit this area for me. But when I'm talking and smiling and laughing, this is the part of my face that picks up light. Also avoiding this area back here kind of keeps all of that blush draping intact without disrupting it with too much shine. And hit up some other high points of the face like the chin, bridge of the nose, and then I take my pinky finger and boop the tip. And apparently that is a very 2016 trend, but listen, I'm old, so. Let's take that onto the brow bone as well and onto the inner corner, which we all know is a Jackie Ina thing. Jackie Ina will forever be the reason that I do my inner corner highlight. And I don't put any highlighter on my forehead anymore. I used to, but listen, it's already shiny. Like, do you see that? The forehead's already got a glow to it and I haven't done anything to it. All that's left to do is a lip. Do we just... Do we just do? Yeah, okay. So let's just line real quick with some almond rose. And I don't know if I took my lip lining technique from anyone in particular. I mean, if there's one thing Instagram has in abundance, it's lip contour tutorials. So next I'm going to blur out the lip line a little bit with a brush. I don't do this often, but this is a technique that I've seen Jordy do, I've seen Pontberry do. Usually I'll only do this on the very top and the very bottom. And I think it just softens everything and makes makes everything really romantic and pretty. Yeah, let's keep it a little bit darker today. Just kind of feeling it. This is a Noctex Cosmetics Liquid Lip Vial in the shade Requiem. Noctex, still to this day, one of my favorite liquid lip formulas, so get into it. And this is another little thing I picked up from Likely Makeup, but when applying a liquid lipstick, I always tap it out. And this, again, softens the lip, blends the product really nicely into the lips, gets rid of excess product buildup, generally just makes them more comfortable to wear. And then if I need to clean up the lip line, I'll just take a little bit more of the Maybelline Superstay and a tiny flat brush. You can just use it to patch things up a bit. Also, this is a great way to knock out some creases that might have shown up over the course of the last couple of hours. I just run that brush over the crease with some powder and usually I can brush them right out. All right, I think all that's left to do now is spray down. And I left my fan at home. Oh, cause I packed it for the shoot. It's okay, I have a fan in this room, it'll work. And this is something that I rarely show, but because my preferred setting sprays often leave me with quite a lot of excess shine in areas where I don't want them to be shiny, what I do is I take my little velour puff here and I will press and tap over the areas that I want to take down the shine. The jawline here in the nose crease across the bridge, and this just takes down the shine a little bit. All that's left to do is a little bottom mascara, which I always do after setting spray, because with my eye shape, sometimes setting spray will just stamp the mascara right onto the eye bag. All right, folks, that is the in-depth base routine all complete. Threw in a little eyeshadow tutorial in there. I spoil you guys. So now you know what I'm getting up to off camera before I see you guys. Also, I hope that it was interesting to hear all of the people in the makeup industry who have inspired me. And it's also interesting for me to go back and kind of analyze all of the origins of my own little idiosyncrasies of makeup. I think everyone creates their own method to make sure that they feel their best. And this is mine. And I think as my tastes change, 
change as I get older. These things are always going to shift. But for right now, as a 31 year old woman, this is kind of where I'm at. You know, I think we always kind of look back on our old work and cringe a little bit. It's also easy to forget that, you know, makeup styles change, beauty standards change. The zeitgeist is shifting constantly. So of course we're gonna try and keep up with that, but also at the same time, try and make these styles and techniques and methods our own. And of course, having a makeup channel and having your makeup journey documented on the internet for everyone to see definitely makes it easier to reflect on how far you've come. So I guess I'm lucky in that regard or unlucky depending on which way you wanna look at it. But I think it's been really fun to watch my own journey. So even though I'm taking all this inspiration from many other artists, I think it's also really cool to watch my artistry really come into its own. You gotta start somewhere, but then eventually you'll just figure out what you like. That being said, I really hope that this was helpful to anyone who was really curious to know just exactly how I did everything. If I missed anything, please let me know. All right, I think that is where I'm gonna leave it today, folks, cause I got, I got a lot of shit to do. So I am going to bounce, but before I do, please let me rattle off the spiel to you. Here are the many ways that you can help out my channel. You can give this video a huge thumbs up. You can comment down below what you thought of everything. You can subscribe. Any and all engagement with my videos is incredibly crucial to their success in the algorithm, especially as a small creator. So if you have a few spare seconds of your life, please engage with this video. You can follow me on other social media. I will leave those right there. If you wish to support me financially, I do have a Patreon. The link is down below in the description box, along with a bunch of petitions to sign and places to donate. And with that, folks, please stay safe, stay sane, wash your hands, wear a mask, stay home if you can, get vaccinated, just keep doing your best, and I will see you on the next one. Bye!